The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced that their own righteousness and of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. So I don't know about you, but um, you know, in the political world, we got Hillary and Trump, and the Cubs are going to be in the World Series. So, is it going to be the end of the world? Everybody went for the hills! Who knows? Whether it's going to be the end of the world or not, I don't know. Only God knows that. Uh, but on the serious end of that, you know, we, we do have to look at our candidates that we do have that are coming up for election. And this last week is just kind of a... Um, Something that kind of shocked me a little bit is, um, you know, one of the candidates, you know, ev evidently through WikiLeaks, um, was exposed on um, some anti-Catholic stuff, a plot to try to undermine the church and to infiltrate the church to cause disunity within the church. And you think about that, by the very fact that such a candidate would do such a thing would make them an enemy of the church if, if they in fact did that. I mean, they would, that means that they would actually, they actually sought and did things against the church and to attack the church for its demise. And if that is true, if there was a candidate that we knew, that we knew was there to undermine the church, then it would be a sin to elect that, to vote for that candidate. We have an obligation to protect Holy Mother Church, and we are primarily and firstly Christians and Catholic. We owe our allegiance to God not to any political party. It is Jesus Christ that saves, not any political party. And we always got to keep that in check. Now, if that was just a rumor, I could understand, but the same candidate publicly, more than once, more than once, but publicly admitted that they First of all, not only think that the church ought to change its teachings, but would use their office and whatever they can do to get the church to change its teachings. Now, that's been a publicly admitted more than once. Look, if a candidate does that, they're making themselves an enemy of the church. And it would be a sin to vote for that person because they are now outrightly and publicly, publicly, not through some WikiLeaks, but publicly 
trying to control the church and suppress the church. This is, a, this is an important thing. Moreover, on top of that, this same candidate, this very same candidate promotes what they call partial birth abortion. Now, if you don't know what partial birth abortion is, this is really nasty stuff. Partial birth abortion is where while the baby is being born, part of the body is out of the womb. And before that baby has a chance to even scream, the life is taken from that baby. That is a very radical stance. And if a candidate thinks that something like this, something as horrendous as this, is acceptable for society, they automatically disqualify themselves as a Catholic to be voted for. And in fact, if this person condones the murder, the murder of over 60 million babies in the United States alone, one-third of the population born since Roe v. Wade in 1973, if they condone this action, it would be a sin to vote for this person because this person has publicly and openly, I don't know how many times, condoned that action. We need to stand up for the poor, for those who are defenseless, and there is no other more defenseless than the baby in the womb. No other, no other more defenseless than that. And so it would be a sin Look, if your children, if you had your children, you had more than three children, right? And they were out playing, and one child decided that they wanted to kill another child. And they did that. And the child did not participate in that murder. You would probably say, why did you not try to stop that? And if that act, the answer of that child was, well, I don't have the right to tell somebody what not to do. That is an invalid argument. If you recognize, if you recognize the very fact that abortion is the taking life of an innocent person, an innocent human being, then we have an obligation to do something about that through the legal process. And the recourse that we have is through our voting. Look, we are the Catholic Church. And the government knows, and there are p politicians who know, that it is the unity of the Church that offers us the ability to stand together in solidarity in the name of Jesus Christ to protect those who are more vulnerable. And they would like to undermine that ability. It has been proven to us as a society now, that there are such politicians that are willing to undermine the Catholic Church. And we need to stand in solidarity for the Church because you are part of that Church. The institution of the Church you are part of. You are the body of Christ. You are children, heirs of the divine God Most High. And you, the good people, the good citizens, the patriots of this country, and citizens called to be citizens of heaven, have an obligation, not just a right, an obligation to make sure that the church is protected, that religious freedom is protected. This church, this institution that you are part of, has just participated in many great works. We had just had the Sock It To Me Sunday, and the people just socked it to me. I have to wear Green Bay Packers socks.
It felt good. I have to say, it felt good to stick my stinky feet in there, but... But this is what the church does. This is what the institution of the church does. It does good for people. Now we got children who are not going to go without underwear, go without socks. It is through the institution of the church, and you're part of that institution. You're participating in it. This is why the church is there for the people. We just raised some money for a family of a man who has cancer. Awesome. You are there. You are there for him and his family. This is what the institution of the church is for. This is what we do as a Christian people and as a Catholic people. This is how we have groups like St. Vincent de Paul. This is why we have the soup supper for those who don't have food, who can't have food, who have a hard time struggling getting by. This is why we have the food bank truck. It is through the institution of the church. You, the people of God, the institution of the church. And this is why we need to defend the church. The church is there for you. You need to be there for the church, the bride of Christ, whom Jesus loves so dearly. And so when we look at this political climate, we do have to remind ourselves we do not owe an allegiance to a political party because as soon as we do, they will betray us. But I can guarantee you one thing, Jesus Christ will never betray you. And so although these WikiLeaks were there to prove to us that somebody is out there trying for the demise of the Catholic Church, it will in fact call together in solidarity the Catholics of the Church, the Catholics in the United States of America. And it is about time we get our backbone back to defend Holy Mother Church, to defend life, to defend to those who are being oppressed, those who are being used by our politicians. We need to call them to task. And this is what we do. This is an obligation of our faith to do such a thing, to raise up such a glorious, beautiful church. You, the beautiful people of God.